put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. In 1981, movie review. In Antarctica, a US research base finds a An, an entity, let's go with that, and without giving too much away of how exactly the events that lead to this go, they find themselves faced with this entity that can imitate any yeah li living things and thus we have a classic horror movie of extreme paranoia and what really keeps the paranoia going is that once you watch the entire film, you still can't be sure when you, when there is something, what, what exactly happened, when and how. There, there are a number of mysteries left unsolved. Many, there's, there's a lot of room for ambiguity in this movie. And to this day, viewers debate what exactly happened. The this is an outstanding horror film. One of my personal favorites and personal favorite movies in general. And part of what makes it such a great horror film is that it avoids some of the pitfalls that plague other horror movies. For one thing, the people in this are actually smart. You know, it, it's a research base. The people there know what they're doing and they don't do the stupid, you know, the, the things that obviously get people killed in horror movies. The, these people tend not to do that, and they actually try to figure out a way to solve this, what, what they're faced with. And it also really works that it's an ensemble cast, and basically you don't, you can't really point to anyone and say, well, that's the lead. And there's also no obvious victims. You, you don't really look at someone in this movie and say, that person's gonna survive and that other person is gonna die. Or maybe you do, but you might be completely wrong. You might have it entirely backwards. The, the tension is, unbelievably thick. This was... This, this... Tension is essentially... Tension and atmosphere are essentially among the different... Sorry. Tension and atmosphere are probably the two things director John Carpenter does the best. And this is... This and Halloween are his crowning achievements. 
as far as that goes. And he actually does reuse some of the things that worked exceedingly well, in, or maybe it's Dean Cundy reusing them, <laughs> since I'm, I'm pretty sure he DP'd both of them. Anyway, yeah, they, they use a few of the same tricks, and there is some of that same feel of the voyeur in this. We, we feel watched. We feel violated in some way. And there are these... Yeah, the, the, the movie builds atmosphere extremely well. From start to finish, you are just completely... You, you just feel the weight. It's gradually increasing. And that's really the secret to horror. The main secret to horror, I would say, is build up. Not rushing in with you know, shoving something in people's faces and going booga booga booga. It's building up so that when you shove something in people's faces and go booga booga booga, there's actually some, some tension that has been built up that is relieved. There is, people were almost expecting that something would happen, and then when something finally does, it's also kind of a relief, along with being really scary. This is incredibly claustrophobic. It takes place in, in this base. There are these long, narrow hallways that... Again, not sure if it's Carpenter or Cundy, but one of those two really loves doing long dolly shots down these hallways. And it is just really... You, you really feel trapped. There's this... Plus, you feel like something could jump out of the next corner. And it's also extremely isolated. The movie takes place during the winter of... It's at the same year it was made, 1982. And winter in Antarctica... Yeah, that's, that's harsh. And... The... There, there are problems reaching anybody. There, there are actually there are a couple of scenes where the radio operator Windows is stuck in the he's, he's yeah he's in the radio room and someone comes and yells at him telling him he has to reach somebody and he's like reach somebody reach somebody we're in the middle of nowhere man and yeah it's pretty funny. And, yeah, it's just extremely isolated. There's, there is one other base nearby, but, well, you'll see. And so, yeah, so, so you have these three. You have the paranoia, the claustrophobia, and this isolation and yeah that is a really great recipe for horror i already got uh, i already mentioned a little bit about the humor this has some really really great humor there are several wise cracking characters kurt russell gets some really great lines and yeah, I already mentioned windows. There's this. Yeah, there there are just various characters, and some of them are the, and they're kind of funny in various ways, and and the, the humor never interferes with the horror. It there's no one laughing in the face of something terrifying. There's actually there there there's one or two like twisted bits of humor. And the characters, excuse me, are 
also nice and distinct with really subtle characterization. I couldn't offhand say just how many there are, but I don't know, 10 people maybe in the, like I said, this ensemble cast. And yeah, you, you can tell them apart. And, you know, the, and the, the acting is pretty good as well. Rather than a remake of the 1951 original, this is an actual adaptation of Who Goes There. And it pretty much gets everything good from the short story right up there on the screen. As well as ditching the sort of the aspects of that short story that were dictated by the time it was written. Because let me tell you, it was a goofy ass story at points. Again, like I said in the review of the 51 one, the short story was written in 1938, or published in 38, I believe. So yeah, obviously it's... Some of the stuff they found scary back then is not going to be scary today. And I will say one thing that this does much better is that it, it is, again, the ambiguity. That story got too specific at points. Before I go too far away from the horror and the, the tension, I should definitely mention Ennio Morricone's score for this is unreal. The way it just builds and builds and the use of fairly simple bass, bass chords is just amazing. That man, yeah, that's, that's just artistry. The pace is really tight. I had actually forgotten, the movie is like, the movie's 98 minutes, not counting the end credits. I was, I had, it had been a while since I last watched it, I had completely forgotten how fast it moved. It, it wastes no time. Like I said, the, the characterization is done over the course of it, just, you, you see characters interact, you, it doesn't, there isn't really a scene where two people just sit down and they have a conversation and thus you learn about both characters. No, it's constantly being driven ahead by the plot. There's, I mean, there, there are interactions, of course, but all of them do very much pertain to the plot. Now... say the, the the things that are left open for debate the it's it's still credible that basically like it, it seems like it could be a crutch to just say that's for you to imagine but it isn't because it actually makes sense that it could have happened we're just not told exactly how it happened but it's not like suddenly something is like is going on that you can't imagine how could that possibly have and you're like okay what's the expert how did this happen and the, the you know carpenter just like you know you you imagine it's, i'm an artist no it's it actually makes sense and there there's a ton of just it's it's interesting stuff to to theorize about Anyway, the, the gore effects are incredible. I should say, 
it's important to note, while there is a lot of gore in this movie, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Seriously. If, if you think that you can't stop, if you have to ask, will I be able to stop this movie? No. Just no, if you have to ask. Now, while there is a lot, it never takes over. It's never the focus of the film. That remains on this growing, tense atmosphere. Before I get too into the gore, this movie is also astoundingly intense when when something big does happen like like I said it's it's very much a movie of build up but when something does happen yeah you're you're going to be jumping in your chair and just scared out of your mind it it really is terrifying. But yes, the gore. The effects hold up incredibly well. And this was the first big job of, for Rob Bottin. And he did Essentially all of the effects, I think that Stan Winston took over just a few smaller, just because the Boutine had such a massive workload. But yeah, essentially, essentially everything in the film, every effect. And the, the poor guy, he was like 22 years old when he, when he was doing this, he worked himself into exhaustion. Like when the movie was over, he checked into a hospital and just, yeah. He destroyed himself, and every second of effort is right up there on the screen. It looks so convincing. I'm not sure there's really any effect in the movie that isn't convincing. I couldn't offhand really think of any. There, you, you never really point to anything and say, ah, well, that's how they did that. And, yeah, it's all practice. I think there's my, maybe like a tiny bit of animation, although I think actually it's like stop motion. Basically, the effects are practical, and, yeah, that does tend to look more real than CG. And, yeah, of course, CGI wasn't really advanced at the time, but still. And... Botin, not only did he work incredibly hard making this stuff look real, he was also really creative with it. He pretty much plucked these creatures from nightmares. And I'm not, not your nightmares, but he found, like, a sick son of a bitch somewhere and plucked his nightmares and just put all those grotesque things up on the screen. And, yeah, it's really, really terrifying. I should also say, moving away from the gore, this has that nice sort of convincing quality in sort of clothing and physical environment and such, similar to you know other sci-fi horror like Alien, with basically everything looking lived in, looking natural. It doesn't seem like they just, you know, broke open this, you know, it's clear that these guys have been living there and working there for a while. 
things look a little worn without being broken and yeah, it, it's very convincing. It's also a movie that really captures the icy cold of the, that, that's part of the isolation, you know. You really believe that in this movie, going outside and staying there is, is going to kill you. It might take a little time, but it's going to kill you. You, you have to actually stay in. And when they talk about there's, there's going to be a storm, you're like, oh man. You, you really totally and completely believe that the weather, the very, very nature around these people could very well be th their demise. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Definitely one I'd recommend. It's... Yeah, I, if you haven't already watched it, Go do so immediately. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.